Reality. UFOs. Science. Consciousness. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That might not be a real thing. The podcast. Spark in the joint. You know it's that kind. Diet Pepsi with a twist <laughs> of lime. Get ready, babies. It's podcast time. Wow. Hey, what's that, up? That was premeditated. <laughs> what's up, everyone? It's, that might not be a real thing. It's the crew over the here. The podcast. The podcast. That's right. Yeah. Uh, thanks for listening in. Uh, this show is officially brought to you by NRG Tree. Check them out if you want to own your own solar. That's N... R G Tree at nrgtree.com. Hey now. I'm sorry, I wasn't even hey, hey, I was getting my song of the week ready. And we'll talk, talk <laughs> hey, thanks for listening in, everyone. If you like the show, spread it around. Hit us up on Instagram at that might not be a real thing. Podcast. Yeah, that's correct. The how podcast. long that's fine because we're gonna how? have a lot of different things, you know. How? How long will I be saying the title with you immediately saying the podcast? Forever. And how long before... Well, because sometimes we'll have the t-shirt, I'll be like, the t-shirt. How long will before I can say the word reality? UFOs. <laughs> no, you just instinctively I go, can't, yeah. UFOs. Consciousness. Yeah. Science. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's my line, you son of you, a bitch. You my, I think you took my line, actually. Yeah, I know. I, fu- I fucked we, it up. We might have to do, we redo We haven't done that. that in a while. We gotta redo it. Yeah. We should yeah. redo it with like some crazy rock Let's music. Let's do it like, with a live band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should. Like like Letterman. We should have Jedivard record something for us. Je- yeah, yeah like, we could do that. I could get him to do that. That might not be a real thing. <laughs> Fucking listen to the show. We're in a graveyard. I don't know what he sounds like. I'm just vis- I'm envisioning like I a- know someone in Michigan too in a band that I, might I be able too. to. Yeah, Second Salem. So yeah, no, and I know a band called I Decide I that yeah. is in Michigan and they loved me. Yeah, like they wa- they sent me a message the other day um, with passes to get it to the show. I'm like, listen, I don't live there. Like, <laughs> yeah. my I have some friends in Michigan. They know I visit though you? sometimes. Yeah. So where do you know where in Michigan? I'll find out. But they, my boy Chills McGill's. Yeah. Um, Chills McGill's. He was supposed to go to Thailand with me in February, but he uh, he backed out like a bitch. No, well, kind of, but he got a job running a new dispensary that's owned by like oh. on a Native American reservation. I'll let that slide. And they're like opening up like the week we were supposed yeah. to go. So I'll let like, that. I can't. Not, I'll let that slide. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I'm letting it slide too. Uh, but you know, we do have. Some fans down in the New York IRS office, or it could be Jersey, but I think it's New York. And huh. yeah, oh, really? What comes really? handy? Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of, lot of <laughs> there's a lot of cross homogenation going on right now, between, which brings me to an, uh, an announcement. But my boy, uh, Sloth, uh, Ethereal Sloth, uh, he, he's in a band, yeah, by, by night, by day, he works for the IRS. And I game with him sometimes. And so he's heard I had a show on, you know, whatever. So he's been tuning into it and he digs it and he's, you know, whatever. Yeah. So we have some fans in the IRS office in New Hello. York right now. Cool. Hello, IRS. Those little bean counters are down there. Hey. Uh, they're doing their thing. And uh, I just want to shout out. Flicking beans. Shout out. I was going to say, I'm not a bean counter, but I'm a bean flicker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Shout out to those guys. My announcement and then we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it over to D- Danny Demonic for Song of the Week. Uh, a long time now, I've been gaming pretty hard. Gaming's a big part of my life. Uh, people are like, why aren't you a streamer? And I've always resisted it and said, mm, I don't want it to become a thing. That's yeah, my what time, if, whatever. What if you want to game naked? Precisely. You'd, you'd have to do like an OnlyFans. You'd you could have probably only make fans. money. Precisely. Yeah, with the big ding dong hanging out. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Just like hanging over like the chair. Like <laughs> me and Maca were outside freezing our ding dongs off earlier, and we were talking about like the the size swings that penises and vaginas yeah. can make and it's just like a miracle of biological design and like oh yeah our penises were so tiny for being yeah. cold earlier oh, now, yeah. now it's like i'm like half thought out yeah. so it's like <laughs> start now and then women the, the same the same way i'm women. at like one quarter yeah, impulse power right now 
We, no, but we can from it where can we get, are normally to how big opposite. it can oh, get yeah, when we give true. birth. You know what I mean? That's yeah. true. That's amazing. But anyway, penises and vaginas aside, uh, I am officially on Twitch now, gaming, <gasps> uh, PUBG. Ooh. And uh, yep, see you in Valhalla, nineteen eighty. That's a capital C, a capital U in Valhalla. Quentin. Quinn's obsessed well, with have him Norse sub- mythology. Have him subscribe to uh, that. And uh, do I really I'll, want I'll him you. watching you yeah, play totally, Twitch? Oh, totally. Oh yeah, totally yeah, for sure. And I don't have a camera set up yet, so I'm just gaming. But we got uh, we got our first like subscribers this week from you know being on. Yeah. And uh, my team was like pretty jazzed. Like nice. People are, people are watching us play. That's cool. Yeah, we're a good we're well, a good time. To I watch. think uh, that's just going to lead us to being on Twitch. Yeah. Well, uh, interestingly enough, I, will I never have. Do that. Interestingly enough, I have a link to our show on. Oh, you mean our company? Yeah. Oh, I, thought, oh. I was just thought you meant gaming. I'm like, Dan I'm never going to do gaming on that. No, no so. Dan doesn't game. I'll handle the gaming, bud. Yeah, I don't game. Yeah, you <laughs> I don't play games. Deaths. I'll game, but I don't sh- I do not do first person shooters. You, I'll you play sports games. Stuff. I don't play games. Yeah, but this, you, that's the thing I on the Twitch is games. everything, though. It's like everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, They're like, no. oh, do you want to watch somebody play Legend of Zelda on the original Nintendo? Here, yeah. Here you go. Oh, yeah. I watch people play Harvest Moon. and It's kind of intuitive because remember when we were kids? we had one nintendo yeah, and one. most of the play most of the games were one or two players yeah. but if you had more than two people everyone else was watching yeah and it was like semi-entertaining I watching people watcher. play video games like there's a lot of games that my brother and my older cousins were just so much better at than i was that i was a perpetual watcher and i still to this day love watching like the kids play video yeah. games and stuff like that because there's a lot of video games that i just can't play and I just wow. enjoy, like, I used to watch my brother play Final Fantasy, and I would beg him to play. Like, well, can you please play? Can I want to watch. Kids wow. would yeah. go to, I don't know where you went to play Mortal Kombat, but, like, kids what? would go and hang out and watch, like, the good kid play. Yeah, know? yeah, that's true. Like, that the, was, Asian, yeah, the Asian kid that knew how to play really yeah, good. Yeah, 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 at the yeah. mall or yeah. At, yeah. Um, at, like, the skating rink. Right. Or, I miss the fucking or, um, arcade in the mall. Yeah. What yeah. was it called? The fun machine? Dream machine. No, no. Yeah. Dream, dream machine. Dream machine. Dream machine. Yeah. yeah. Was it there when I met you? I think it still was. No, but Why I, I used to go to when I was a kid in Watertown. There's like a Taco Bell. We needed another Taco Bell. Why can't we have a dream <laughs> it's machine? It's gone now. I know. It's fucked up. Wait, Why? Taco Bell's not even there? No, Taco Bell's not in the Whatever. mall. Whatever. Great. Good thing we got rid of the dream There's machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot. <laughs> But yeah. like, why isn't there like a sweet virtual reality place in there you can go to know. now? Like, there what? is no. There's a virtual. No, it's like Galaxy Mini Golf no, or the some mall? stupid oh, shit like yeah. that. This Something is, weird. This is fucked up. Okay, and I I don't know if it's like, I don't know exactly what happened. I could okay. Malls used to be like a destination. You went with the family. There was some fun shit for the kids. You could go shopping. There was food. Well, it was yeah. like it was everything. Mm-hmm. But there were, the point is there were resources put into the, the facility to make it like family friendly and give kids stuff to do and make it a little something for everybody. Now, it, somehow it turned into just stores, which doesn't make any fucking sense because like what they call in business school, the brick and mortar quotation mm-hmm. mark stores mm-hmm. aren't the thing anymore. Everyone's right. online shopping. So you got to get people there to they should put a fucking roller coaster in the mall. They the have, they do dying. have <clears throat> they do have a few things, yeah, <laughs> in the mall. Like they have like these ride on right. um, little animals Ooh. for the kids, and they do have a little arcade. Arcade's where, key. Where dude. the second GameStop used to be. For some reason, that mall had two GameStops. Where are kids supposed to hang out these days? They just stay in their rooms. They all don't. The, the two thing. GameStops blew my mind. Actually, yeah, yeah. in the, the mall, the second one's yeah. gone now. That just shows you how big gaming is. Yeah, okay? there was one upstairs at one end, and then I know. downstairs at the That's other. Crazy. But now the one downstairs at the other end is a uh, arcade. So there's like yeah, ski, like one ski ball thing and right. like a couple games. And they had some that stock money. <laughs> they could afford all the that's no, yeah. those. Those stores were in there originally forever. Right. Um, name one other store in the mall that had two stores. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, maybe Lens Crafters had a, yeah. had, a had like a, a express kiosk. Yeah, yeah. kiosk. Right. Yeah, yeah. Shit. We should go to the mall. We need to go. I've we, been can to we the go mall. to the mall? Can we go to the mall? Dan yeah. and I go. It's Christmas season. Yeah. We, I haven't a... been to the mall since 1988. What? Dan I've been, and I, I went 1991. All... I think I'm at like summer 92. <laughs> can we? Can we go together sometime yeah, this sure. not this week but next week like peak Christmas season we'll sure. get ripped and go to the mall. I just went to the outlet mall today. <laughs> sure. Dude, the outlet malls are uh, where it's Oh, yeah, yeah. I it think that's great. the future of malls. Yeah. You want us to go to we'll do whatever you want, Sean. You pick it. 
I'll go supply to, the grass. Bro you date? supply the destination. Go to the mall. Go to Buffalo Wild I, Wings. I, will, I love B-dubs. I miss chicken so much. I will keep the fake homosexual relationship jokes to one <laughs> one time. <laughs> yeah. I'll do one the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he'll do it in front of the waitress. We used to go out. At b Dub. We used to go out. <laughs> we used to go out to the movies. Yeah. And every movie. <laughs> When, once we got to, up to buy that, because before yeah. you could buy tickets online, right. even when you could, you had to like cash them in at the place. Yeah. Every goddamn movie, I'd get up there and be like, "Hi, <laughs> like, Sean, <laughs> me and me and my baby are here to see the movie." Like yeah, I pretend yeah, we're yeah, gay, yeah, and yeah. Sean would be like, "This sucks. I just want to get the fuck out of here." <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get some. Bubble. Eventually, he just got used to it. But yeah, yeah, the first yeah, couple yeah. times, he was like, "That we're not." That's yeah, not, yeah, not. Yeah. The movies was where it was at when we were. Kids, that was a place Hell to yeah. hang out. Like, yeah. still was when we met. No, I know it. Like, just we, we yeah, we to used to go all early, the time. Uh, all uh. time. No, but I mean, we didn't like, we didn't know each other as teens. I mean, like when <sighs> your parents would drop you off at the. No, we'd go. We'd get dropped yeah, off. Yeah, no. Yeah, I would go too. We'd, we'd, you know, we'd call the people on the hard line phone and be like, "Hey, I'll meet you at the movies at four. You know what I remember? Okay, I'll see you there. No way to check out the like. You, you either showed up or you didn't. There was I no remember way. seeing uh, Star Wars. Um, waiting in line for like. Two weeks before Star Wars: The Phantom Menace in '99, um, we skipped school to go there. And I remember people like um, using the online kiosk to like print out the tickets. And we're like, yeah. "How the fuck did you do that? <laughs> like, what is that?" That was the future. It was the future. It was already happening. It was 1999. Yeah, yeah. smartphones. Yeah. yeah, CGI. Yeah, we. Uh, Which he, theater did you guys? See it was that Showcase at? and Lowell. Oh, okay. Because oh, the he, old one. Because he got pizza. We were hanging out with all these nerds talking Star Wars. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were so excited because it was the first thing Star Wars movie since we were like little kids. We never, like, we never knew we that there would be. like now. We never knew there would be another one. We, we of like course. fantasized about it. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden the trailer came out and we were like, holy shit, it's actually happening. They've been talking about it for years. Star Wars fans. They should have made a sequel then, not a prequel though. Because cause Mark Hamill and all of them were still young enough to do a really good one. Yeah. yeah. It, they could, they, they should have, they shouldn't have missed that opportunity. They would have been a little bit older. Older, Mark Hamill would have been like 40, 45 maybe. Yeah, it would George, have been perfect. George Lucas had it figured out though, because he was just fucking around. He was like really one of the first guys fucking around with like real digital cameras. Oh, for the when whole... he saw Jurassic Park, he went nuts. He was like, "Oh, I want to like use CGI." Yeah, like he went nuts. Now, over. Now, he went yeah. a little too nuts. Grand Moff but... Tarkin in in Rogue One looks CGI'd. Yeah. A little, a little, a little, a but tiny Princess bit. Leia. But, but they could still bring him back, though. It's cool. in the new Star Wars. Looks like, great. What about Luke in the new Mandalorian? Luke, oh, in Mandalorian, oh. Luke, Luke Skywalker, <laughs> yeah. all fucking unreal. Dead. Oh, that was insane. But the book of Boba Fett, I was like, that's Luke Skywalker, a hundred percent. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't. It might have been one. the Mandalorian. It was Mandalorian, Mandalorian. at the end. At mm-hmm. the end, yeah. yeah. When he comes to grab, Gar- uh, spoiler alert. No, 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 no. It was in, it was in Boba Fett. In too. the book of Boba Fett. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. There's, there's a, a scene where he's training. There's an episode with the yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I yeah. haven't seen that. Um, yet. I'm behind. Yeah, that didn't so another thing, my kid gets my kid gets bonus points for things all the time for being the fucking best kid ever. Uh, and it's something we were just talking about, like where do kids hang out these days? Yeah. And you were like online yeah Yeah. um in the metaverse she she told me this week she's like you know what dad i'm making a conscious effort to limit my screen time she's like today i'm at an hour and a half and she's like if you're not on your screen you're in reality and i I was like (laughs) and i was like yeah exactly you could do anything like in real life and she was like i'm baking i'm reading a book I'm like, that's kind of the original screen time I yeah. told her. I was like, you need to, I was like, it's good. I was like, but you could, you know, I'm like, you, we didn't have computers, but people had books. I'm like, they just put their face in a book and yeah, that, you know, was, yeah. you know that was escaping reality while you're in the book. Yeah. I hate those assholes who like are online preaching to people saying like, right, it's not my only, name. you know, you're not smart if you don't sit down and read books. Like I read tons of books. It's like, go wipe your ass at those books. I read books when I can, but I don't read them just to be a pretentious dick. Right, she she made almond hey, milk or something. She's doing stuff. She's that's doing what I'm stuff. That's so. cool. But uh, hey, uh, uh, can we? First of all, I want to shout out Declan because ahead. I just want to tell him it's like like how I feel about him. Tell him I feel Aww. about him. Yeah. How do you, I think how do you I feel about him. I've only Bro, hung out with him a couple times, maybe three times. I think he's uh, like I think he's the nicest guy ever. Like I want to be friends. You know, like, yeah. I, I don't want to. Sp- I don't want to. I don't want to spill his beans on the air, but I think everyone already knows he's got quite the. Uh, Oh, really? He's got quite the hog. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean about that. But like, <laughs> now that you mention it. I'm just telling you, he's like a beacon oh, of, he's like a beacon he's of a positive. Sleeper. It's like a sleeper. Uh, he's physique. like a beacon of positive energy when you're around him. And then How old is he? He's our age. Who's our, no, he's like who's 36. our age? Your age or my age? He's like 36, 37. He's, lo- he's like two years, three years younger than us. He's my sister's age. 
He's oh, in the okay. middle. So of can us. I can I do another shout out too? Um, this is a sad one. My friend, uh, my friend Josh B died. He was um, he died unexpectedly um, from VTAC, like I get, but his, he has cardiac sarcoidosis. That, is that how you know him? Yeah, yeah. and his defib- defibrillator didn't shock him for some reason, and he died, uh, like in his forties. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so he. Uh, that well, just maybe the, maybe his the, the heart day. was worse than like. Oh, he was in remission. He just he was like uh, like active and like it's just really scary. So like, I was thinking about that. So I just wanted to shout out that. All right. I, Sad. I posted a uh, thing on our on our IG, which this is like the first time I've reposted something. Yeah, I bet. Well, probably. I don't know about reposts or whatever. Yeah, you can just okay. share it. You can reshare so, stuff. Yeah. You need to post it. Share it, reshare it, and then like your own post. That's so, that's Danny, what the boomers do. Danny, have you been watching the um, Graham Hancock thing, Ancient Apocalypse, where he's down in the jungle and he's like, Yeah, yeah, I watched the whole thing. Okay, good. So, I love Graham Hancock. Joe Rogan's on there, and he's. She just made a face like, When did you watch this? <laughs> like, I watched a lot, fuck? honey. At work when my mold was set. Jack Talk okay? yeah. You don't know. Yeah. Jack Talk Tie. Jack Talk Tie, real well. But I, I reposted something from Joe Rogan had like a picture of a monkey on a tree today, and then it like fast forwards and like, you know, and it turns into like a dude like fashioning stone material, like tools. And that's like the evolution of man, basically. Yeah, right, right. But then it turns into robots, like cybernetic beings oh. and eventually we don't we shed our bodies and just live in like a mainframe so is this it's on our ig what we're doing right now Anyways. i think i did see that um, it's on our ig so it was can. almost like it was ai's Let me see. was it the ai um rendition of like evolution or some shit or like evolution of man I'm not 100 percent where it comes from. To be I honest, think with it you. was he, po- the, he posted it. I think it was the ai shit that they've been fucking around with. Oh, that's terrific. I mean, I, I read worried. somewhere real quick. I didn't actually read it. The article. I read the title of the article. I read somewhere. I read this title of of this uh, institution of archaeology. I don't know what it's exactly called. Want that show to be listed under fiction? What because show? they think that he's Joe like Rogan's a, show. No, or ancient apocalypse. Ancient, the ancient apocalypse. They want it to be fiction. Netflix. Yeah. Why does it have to be fiction? He's fucking. He says he's not a scientist. He's an investigative journalist. He went down there to investigate what the fuck he thinks is going on. He presented his evidence. Yeah, I, th- I think I read like the What's first What's fictitious about it? It said like it. He's. A, they don't think he. They think he's like a pseudo. Pseudo arch- science. Yeah, 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 they yeah. say that about him all the time, but yeah. who cares? Like he, all, all he's doing, like he says it ten times over in his books, on the air, on the show. He's like all Graham Hancock ever says is like, listen, I don't have any degrees in it. I mean, maybe it's like a degree in something, right? Like literature or whatever. He's he's always saying like, I'm an investigative journalist. I come down here, I investigate, and I publish my findings. Yeah, and like if anyone wants to fact check him, the whole world can do it. He's got, he's like, he's challenging everyone. He's like, go ahead, fact check it, you right. know? But these people, like, I don't know what the, like, what's their, what's the big, like, I don't know. I feel like. I didn't read it because I haven't watched the show. I feel like as a scientific minded person, right? I love it when you we didn't find say out. You're a scientist. Oh, I don't want to get, I don't want to get, I don't want to get bullied. We talk about that. I didn't want to get bullied by, right, the, go ahead. by the group. But, uh, <laughs> Okay, I don't want to get Sorry. I don't want to get bullied by the group. Right? Yeah, I didn't right. mean to snore. But uh, <laughs> basically, like, I get excited when they find out something that rewrites what we think is going on. Right? right They're right. like, "Oh, hey, by the way, turns out this isn't it. It's this, and we've got the math to prove it, bitches." Listen, I, I don't think that the, the uh, mainstream science is afraid of re of rewriting necessarily. I think they're so sure of what what they know, yeah. and I think they think anything else is stupid. I don't think they I don't they think don't, they're just yeah. like trying to hide some truth that they're like, oh, no, we can't change it. Like, even if they have, the, like, I think they just don't want to change it because they think Graham is, like, ridiculous. So that's all I think they think it is. I don't know, dude. It's either that or they're trying to hide something. I mean, You're Right, and why would they all hide something all, like, together like that? Well, something's going on, Dan. Like, th- there's these giant underground structures that they're finding with radar and new technology that we didn't have before. So, like... I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying I I um, I don't think there's any evidence of, like, a... Of, like, um, a technological society like we were, 
but like because Graham Hancock, Hancock does make some leaps, but I think there is evidence of like um, some advanced civilization at the time. Well, like, I'll tell you what, there's definitely, according to the television show, and I've seen other things too, there's definitely a lot of what appears to be cities that have been swallowed up by the sea. Yeah, oh, and yeah. That's essentially like what show is this? Uh, Ancient Apocalypse. They but. need to check out the Amazon more than anything because the growth is insane. And, like, everything's been grown over, right. and there's pyramids and all sorts of crazy-ass cities and shit. Well, there's a lot of stuff that you just can't build without technology. Right. Like, even today, we'd be like, I don't know how we could... Well, moving the blocks for, like, some of those blocks that weighed, like, 100 tons, like, how? Some people said sound. So- yeah, but how? Technology, <laughs> man. I don't know. Yeah, but how? Sci- science. We couldn't even move certain blocks like they do to, like, stack in the pyramids. We'd have a real hard time. That's the point of science. We don't know everything. Like, the future, in, like, 20 years, we'll come up with some new stuff. In, like, 100 years, there'll be some new shit. If we don't blow ourselves to smithereens in, like, 200 years, there'll really be some crazy <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like sci- science evolves with the times, and with new technology come new discoveries. So, like, now they have this new radar that goes underground. And, like, dude, these people built these giant fucking underground cities. How'd they do it? Plus, they have these giant rocks and blah, blah, blah. Um, one of the things I was going to mention that's not even on that show is that, like, they discovered some new form. Now, I don't. Maybe you can look it up for me, Matt, since you've got your phone. But I don't even really know what trigonometry is. I think it's just like math rules. But <laughs> I'm not, I mean, there are some math rules clearly involved in it. Right. All right. But yeah. uh, I'm not a mathematician. Yeah. And I guess they discovered uh, from Babylon, it was in cuneiform. Cuneiform, cuneiform, different way to say it, right? The little tablets they have all writings in down there from... Yeah. Mm-hmm. They discovered a whole like library of trigonometry that humans don't use currently with different number systems and stuff like that, but it all it all checks out. And so they basically this is super advanced math that they've discovered written on stone. So I'm just saying that there could be a uh, technology like human species could have been more more technologically advanced than we are now, but there was like a major nasty like I mean, almost everyone agrees in that flood story, right? Like Noah's Ark. Yeah. Like, right. That sounds a lot like global warming. Just fucking all of a sudden the seas rose like fucking uh, yeah. 50 feet and Miami's gone and this is gone and that's <coughs> gone. <coughs> and what the fuck do you think would happen if that happened? Like people would freak the fuck out. The, there'd be wars. There'd be splintering of countries. There'd be fighting of resources. There'd be the, people would wipe each other out. with. Bombs there'd be a shit. lot of loss of cultural ad- art- artifacts as yeah. well. Yeah. People I think, would wipe shit out. I think that they were pretty advanced back then and everything. And when this, it goes back further than we think, but I think we are the pinnacle of technology, innovation, and just ruling the earth like we do. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't think anybody did it like we did. And people like Grant Hancock will always say stuff like, you know, people like to think of us as like the pinnacle and like, that's not true. And like in some ways, probably not. And, but like in technological and like achievement ways, I don't think anybody ever came close to us. No, I just, they didn't leave satellites I just, in space. There's I disagree. nothing in orbit. Nothing. There's yeah, like that a couple have been, things possibly. That, that could have been a conscious effort to, to remove those things. Mm. There could have been a movement where people, like could've people been. eventually got Probably to a point not. where they were like, look at all this technology. Right. It's doing nothing but blowing the earth up. I think let's, they would have left more Let's average. revert back to this. You know, right. we don't, we don't know. Let me read this title of this article. What is it? Hold on to your seats. I'm holding on. Especially Dan, Dan. and Candyman. Oh, Babylonians. Babylonians. Discovered, may have discovered trigonometry. Okay. 1500 years. Before the Greeks invented it, yeah, no oh, shit. sorry guys, shit. no shit. You guys oh, that, aren't that, that smart. No, that doesn't that that's doesn't fine. bother me. The Greeks took credit for it because they went in and killed everyone and took the libraries. They were like, <laughs> they were like, oh yeah, yeah this we, is our math. This is, yeah. I never had that patriotism towards like being Greek or yeah, whatever yeah, ethnic yeah. thing. I don't give a fuck. Pythagoras. I'm not a human. Invent. I'll go back further than that. Yeah, you can't yeah, invent yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, you can't invent math. You can just figure it out. Yeah, it just exists. Yeah, but you have but you have ways of. But like what does it say? It like language. But what does it say about the trigonometry? Is it like some? Is it some new math, or did they just figure out that the Babylonians had it first? They used it for roughly fifteen hundred years before the Greeks supposedly invented it. Fifteen hundred. That's crazy. You know, when kids that's a say, long time. You know, when kids say like, um, "What are we even going to use this for?" It's like, I don't know. Like the Babylonians thought it was a pretty good idea to know it. Like, yeah. 
Like, what am I going to use this for? It's like, yeah, no, you might not use it because you're going to be a fucking dummy. And you're not going to do anything with your life. But there's some people <laughs> that actually might do things with their life. And they might actually have to use shit like this. No, that's a that's math. Why we is, teach it. We keep it in the consciousness. Right, right. Math is tough to like explain to p- young children no, why, right, why they're going to need it. But some kids are just not going to need it because they're not going to need, they're not going to be at that, you know, but it has to stay in the consciousness for people like wow. it has to get passed down. Getting back to the, getting back to that AI fast forward drawing. Yeah. It, these, it's insane. These cell phones right now are doing the math and everything's doing the math for the kids. I don't really know, you know, like in 50 years, are kids going to really need to learn basic math like they'll learn basic math but at a certain point there's going to be like computers and shit that are just expected to do all that for everybody i mean we don't know <laughs> they're still gonna have no data entry and shit i know but like, i'm i'm yeah. telling you that kids aren't as good at math now as they were like let's say in the 80s i i i think that could be totally I think it's, it's really it's, confusing i think it's too. fast forwarded a lot um like the stuff that Quentin is learning now in the sixth grade, we probably learned in like seventh, eighth, and ninth. Yeah. You know it's what I so mean? so hard. I can't do it. And, and, I can't help And them. the way that they teach them is a lot different than the way that we learned. So it might be that it's e- it easier and more confusing for those who, you know no, what I mean? it's fucking more confusing. Well, the it's, way they it's do confusing like first grade for- math, <laughs> I can't even do it. Well, you're Gr- not... Grouping... Why don't you just add it? But you're not good at math in the beginning. And I'm you a vampire. <laughs> Vampires <laughs> don't need math. In fact, we <laughs> loathe it. <laughs> I'm the math person in the house. And unfortunately, during COVID, I could not figure out the way they were trying to teach our kids how to do math. So mm. I taught them the way that I knew how to do math. Yeah, and send them to school that, like, and, and this now, is the way my kid's doing it. And Go they, fuck your mother. They kind of <laughs> learned both. And for Quentin, Quentin, is, math is a tough subject for him. So teaching him both ways gives him two options. A couple of, different tools. A couple different tools to figure out how, not just the way that they're learning, because it doesn't work for every kid. Right. You know what I mean? And our way, our old way, didn't work for every kid either. You know what I mean? So, but you can't have teachers out there teaching two different ways to do. Right. You know you, what I mean? They got to kind of. You know what's nuts is I obviously have been doing a lot of, you know, deep dive into the experiments with psychedelics over the last like five years, right? But like unanimously across the board, I think you talk to anybody who's ever done like mushrooms or something like that. You start thinking about math with your own mushrooms, it's like it blows your mind. And I'm talking like basic concepts like zero and infinity. Like <laughs> stuff like that you and I don't really think about, but like you know, because it's math so was big. the last thing on my mind when I was tripping with Dan. Even just like <laughs> one plus one, one plus we one, one equals body. We were one plus one equals no, one. I yeah, we're that, one body. at that point. <laughs> amoebas can do that. Yeah, yeah, that, we, yeah. we were yeah. amoebas. There was, there was some cellular mitosis. <laughs> but I'm just saying math will blow your fucking mind when you're on those types of uh, compounds. And it's just interesting that like you would eat a mushroom that would release a chemical into your brain. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm fried. Uh, <laughs> that, that would then make you want to think about mathematics and other concepts like space time and like geometry and di- you know like look at yeah, all yeah that- I didn't even like certain songs so I was like I'm not no yeah <laughs> I'm like I don't like this song change it when people yeah, do like was, big uh, doses of hallucinogens they get really mathematical like th- yeah. the whole world starts turning into like shapes and, and it's that's what super Dan and precise I it's all zeros and ones the whole thing <laughs> it's kind of well, that's what I'm saying it's kind of nuts because it's like math exists and it's mm-hmm. it's it is yeah right like that's it and like any language any it doesn't matter where it's you're from it's not a like, social construct it's it's a thing that's why we can communicate with aliens with it cuz like yeah you can we, play, don't, we don't create it like you we can create, play no you can play around marriage we create you can you know play I mean? around with it you could be like okay there's um there's 360 degrees in a circle right obviously yeah. right but there could be 720 degrees in a circle just because we agreed that there was 360 right. degrees and then we reset the circle doesn't mean that you can't divide it up no, into like, more degrees. It's like, a, it's like inches in like, you know, metric system. Like, like you know, yeah. I mean, we decide what this means, you and know. So that's the thing about infinity. Like, you could divide it as much as you want, as tiny little slices as you want. And keep dividing those into little. And yeah. still. It just, you can't run out. You just can't. 
And zero is the same fucking. I'm, I'm too stoned for. for Ma- I mean, math is literally <laughs> everywhere. It's everything. it's everything. Is math God? That's what mm, people, God some, is the programmer. Some high level scientists think that like God is some sort of mathematician. I mean, sure, Shirley. Or is the math. <laughs> or is, is the, the math. math. Stop calling me Shirley, number one. And number <laughs> two, if you go into the Bible and you say God did this, God did that at the beginning in Genesis, and you write in the programmer instead, it's pretty fucked up. No, <laughs> it all, it all, it all works. It all works. Oh, like the programmer that. said, like, what yeah. else is Let he? there be light. Oh, he, he loved yeah. us. But what is love? He invented love, right? One so of it's just the, some uh, sort of fucking blind affection that he invented for us. What you and I perceive as love is just chemical. I'm sorry, but I don't think he does seem to give a shit as much as you think. If he, if he's there. Well, I can tell you this, little kid. Well, how many mathematicians have big emotional? Yeah, well, yeah, not too many. Not too many. many. Yeah, true. They're focused on the like. Uh, Yeah, okay. uh, I'm gonna focus on the math right now because that's what really (laughs) is. These days, a lot of people that get into math. That's like that is a fine point, Sean, to make. As a matter of fact, if we're thinking about it, I don't. Mathematicians apparently have either a reputation for being shallow, emotional people, or you know they could just be getting painted wrong. We don't know enough of them. Yeah. Listen, if you're a mathematician and you're out there and you're a sensitive son of a gun, just hit us up on the IG and let yeah, us yeah, know. Let us know. <laughs> like, you guys do not know what I go. I'm on through. the show. You don't know what it's like to know this math and run around all day. Right. Now, you know, people talk about like digital. Uh, that we're living in a digital simulation right math is like the foundation of that whole theory they're like it's too perfect there's too much fucking perfect math rules they're like this is a computer program 100 percent dan and i see glitches in the matrix all the the time time. and listen to this like if you were in like the 40s or something like you were smart you might go to like mit you might get into math or something like that but like nowadays they're not probably as much They'll get into programming and shit like that. Yeah, because the computers you know, right? yeah. can do the math kids so are learning, much faster. Kids are learning oh coding for fun. Oh, yeah, sure. it's a Just whole different fun. thing. And like the, that's what the new generation's doing. I mean, men, women aren't really getting into the sciences too much. What? A very small percentage. No. Really. Tiny no. percentage. No. Based no. on what? No. Your, your wife? I just I just heard Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about they need to get more women in science. It's, it's like a small, tiny percentage. They should. The, they do have a lot of programs trying to get yeah. more women in there, yeah. But yeah. it's it's like, more so than it was. Like, how are we gonna do it with women past. posting their their asses on Instagram constantly? I like, don't post my ass on Instagram. No, I'm just saying, like, like there are different types of people out there, dude. There are guys that like just post pictures of their biceps all day, and they're like, it's yeah. amazing what I see though. But people like just like like that's all they have is like a mirror for themselves to show the world. Like, I'll here say I am, that, here I am. I'll here say I'm. this: like, Wow, you don't have anything else, like. Women definitely like you. Obviously, there's different types of men, and there are different types of women, and there are different people. But unanimously, I think you could say that women think differently than men. Oh yeah. Oh for and so sure. And so, right out of the gate, for sure, we should put them on some problems that we're having trouble with because they're going to look at it in a different way. Right. Agreed. Also, if there were a lot of girls that got into science, there be some, might be some hot science chicks out there that I could go out with and <laughs> maybe have sex with. So. <laughs> For would, me, it's a win-win you, for everybody. Would you feel emasculated if they were smarter than you? No, I love it. You That's like one that? Of my, oh, yeah. Nothing makes me feel emasculated except when a dude is taller than me. I don't like it. <laughs> and you're pretty tall. Everything else, I'm fine. Why do you think I'm so angry? Oh, yeah. Like, the girl... <laughs> no, I just... It's a, Dan, it's precisely what I say when I come around someone taller than me. I'm like, what the fuck? This is not a good Liam, feeling. Liam gets that. He gets that from people. Is get this the hostility. what it, yeah. yeah. Like, is this what All it's time. like to be five foot six and how scary the world must be mm. to run around? I'm so, not scared of so shit. So we, <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm not w- scared of shit and I'm not weak. There's I, a girl at my I work. I said we, not weak. She's, oh. she's, the, sweet, she's the sweetest girl. She's um, a little Vietnamese girl. And she is literally like four number. foot ten. She's like 20. <laughs> Okay, and she's Next got year. a bo- she's got a boyfriend. <laughs> I don't know. Year. She might be twenty. Work with? Yeah, well, she works in a different department, but we like trained in together. We went to school together. Um, she's super sweet, but she's the tiniest thing. And she'll come into my department sometimes. And I'm like, hello, <laughs> like, hi, and I'm like, oh can't hi. See her. Yeah, I can't see her over she's the- under the cube. Well, we have these tubs, these six hundred liter tubs that oh, are yeah. taller than Full me. Full of Bacta you know and mean? stuff. Full of friggin' Bacta tank. <laughs> back you should tanks. bring one of those home. <laughs> <Just basically. laughs> I could use it as a cold plunge. That's a Star Wars joke, Sean. That's what... uh, yeah, you probably could actually. Yeah, <clears throat> put ice in it. 
That's it's a tank over your head. You'd Skywalker be able to stand and... in it. Make an isolation tank out of it. You might be able to stand in a couple of them. We should go do that. At isolation. They have tank. holes in them though. Eat some edibles and go do an isolation have... tank. I want to meditate. They're pretty awesome. I want to yeah. meditate in one. Yeah. That sounds well, fucking saying. awful. No, you float. In what? They float. What? They all float. <laughs> Something. <laughs> like, what do you float and when in? You're down on, here. You uh... float too. That's from Hello, Georgie. I know. I fucking hate it. Stop. Hello, it's, Georgie. Yo, it's a scary fucking movie, dude. I don't do clowns. People. Oh, yes, Georgie. I remember growing up, my mom telling me she was afraid of clowns. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, no. afraid of, are, like, I don't do legit. clowns. I'm like, you're afraid of Bozo the Clown? I, I'm more afraid of Bozo type clowns than I am like the goth creepy clowns. Does yeah. that make sense? What about what about Terrifier, Art the Clown? What the fuck is that? That movie's been I've been watching. The, the, I the don't know movies. what that looks like. He's got the black and white. He's like a mime. Nope. No thanks. Oh, you gotta watch that. No, I'm not gonna He's watch that. Teeth. Why He's would like, I oh, watch that? Oof. It's the scariest clown movie of all time, but you have no, 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 no. no. Terrifier's to, up there though. You have yeah. to give a shout out to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. For, that's what I think that's got a great me. One. I think for, that's what got me when I was very young. Like that's an eighties. You remember that from the eighties? Yeah, but I remember it. But I never Brothers watched it. made it. Yeah. I was in second grade it's when I saw that. Too scary to watch. Yeah, it's yeah. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, motherfucker. Yeah, and they <laughs> built really cool animatronic clowns for it. Yeah, I had one and I sold it to a guy in New York, but like an original. I was too. Uh, young. Eyelids yeah. that moved and shit. Oh, it's rotting, but oh, gross. I had it in my bedroom. It was awesome. Wow. I have I have a song. <laughs> I have a song of the week this week that you're not gonna be ready for. Oh, Ooh. okay. And I have an artist spotlight. Oh cool. shit! Oh shit! So, so obviously my kid uh, listens to music around the house like I do, but she you know she blasts it on the speakers and stuff. So sometimes <laughs> I come home and her stuff's on, and I catch wind of it, and I'm like, oh, I kind of dig it. Now, most of the time. Point of fact, she's listening to 90s, 2000s hip hop okay. slash gangster rap. Right? Nice. Like, I come home, she's listening to like Five On It by Loonies or like, uh, you know, that's such a of, good song. A lot of Tupac and, yeah. you know, West Coast stuff. I caught her listening to some Easy E the other day. I was oh, like, wow. I was like, listen, why don't you just stay away from Easy E? I'm like, he's not a super positive guy. I'm yeah. Like, he's gangster I'm like, rap. I'm like, I'm not, ton- I'm not crazy about tupac i'm like he's got some good stuff i was like stick with biggie tupac's got all good stuff kira's yeah. like why do i stick with biggie i was like because he's rapping about tits and bras menage <laughs> <and> trois, <laughs> sex and sex and sex. yeah Hard. i was like that's all positive stuff i was like there's nothing like horrible about that but anyway the song <laughs> of the week <laughs> the song of the week as i have had a full week to digest it it's yeah. on my yeah i listened to it let's say 150 times 150 jesus easy at work on repeat yeah really sunk in anti-hero by taylor swift what okay. I, have, really, I don't think i've ever heard that song really misleading <laughs> intro yeah. so we are announcing that he is now gay <laughs> so <laughs> so it's got a catchy little it's got a catchy little thing to it a hook to it or whatever it's not that great of a song but when you hear her talking about it she's talking about like that it, her depression works the midnight shift and it's like something that i've talked about for a long time where people that have depression feel a need to be awake at night and they're asleep during the day and then the hook is basically that she's the problem, uh, you know. She's the she's the problem, and it's a really. So I think she's it, the reason why she doesn't have any boyfriends. She's whatever her problems are in why her song. She's saying she's the one that's the problem. She's like, I'm wow. the problem. It's me. Oh, and I think I have it's heard that me. song. Hi. I'm the problem. Oh, yeah. I think I've heard that song on TikTok. And I thought it was a good... Lyrically, I felt like it was a powerful Mm -hmm. song. I don't think it's, like, amazing song. Like, it's not Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus by any stretch of the imagination. I'll tell you that right now. (laughs) Yeah. But it is my song of the week nonetheless, and it was a curveball. I was like, oh, Mac is not going to be ready for this one. Well, it was a hell of a lead-in. That was. we were talking about Biggie Smalls and Tupac. Well, because normally that's what she's rocking out to, and this caught me off guard. I said, that's not what you... you, Yeah. What what is this I'm listening to? I thought he got sucked into the Ticketmaster. Yeah, yeah, for real. It's yeah, Taylor yeah. Swift. If you want to go to Taylor Swift, you are spending you were saying a big mortgage bucks. payment. Mm-hmm. Big bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Who's it, what do you got? Them? Mine is a um, band called Bat Lord, and the album is called Music to Be Buried To, and the song oh. is Undertaker. Wow. And they're like a synth, like, um, they're kind of like Wingo Boingo. They're not a metal band. And I, I dig them. Bat, Bat dig Lord. Em. Bat Lord. People don't get buried to enough music anymore. They always have like a oh, I'm gonna like a lame song. Occasionally, if you <laughs> have a sweet funeral, you get like bagpipes. I or want something. bagpipes at mine. 
And I'm, what's I'm the name Scottish. of the song? I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm do Scott. That. Yeah, you better. I'm Scottish. I'll play it myself. Thank you. I'll play it myself. I'm on, I'm on it. Thank you. I'll rent some. That goes for you, Maggie. You want? I'll what do you want? You bagpipes. Let me do. <laughs> that's not my bagpipes. That's not bad. Like. No, you sound like Quentin playing his trombone. Yeah, I don't yeah. trumpet. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think a human could reproduce the bagpipe sound. No. No. That too... was my best I could do. You have to do it with like a duck lung and it's... shit in there, a bladder, yeah. whatever the fuck it is in there. <laughs> what a sick fuck an instrument. <laughs> they probably did. That reminds me. I've always wanted the kilt, the black kilt. What a barbaric you don't have to wear species. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah i'm playing would on the you back. wear a kilt this summer if we start wearing kilts 100%. all right we'll get one are you kidding me dude yeah That's we'll the ultimate free ball no, <laughs> yeah, no underwear <laughs> i wish we could wear kilts seriously and then we can moon like we can make videos we can moon like like the through the window like woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get one all right i pledge it 20 seriously, 20, utility, we'll get a 20 utility 23 will be they the got summer great, you make a pocket hey and, Fist bump, summer yep. of the summer, summer of, of the kilt. kilt, summer of the kilt. Yeah, right. we're calling it, and we have an right. episode called "The Summer of the Kilt," we'll starting get, June first. Yeah, you heard it here, people. We'll get. I think w- would I be interested in because I can see Danny Demonic in one, but in your attire, like how are you going to work it into your style? He you would know? wear his leather jacket. I'm going to wear black. Yeah, yeah. Not there's actually summer. there's something metal, a uh, heavy metal yeah. about, a, about a black kilt. Yeah. with my band shirt like this. Okay, I'll just yeah, wear band bands. Shirt. What? Yeah. Band shirts all summer. It's gonna be awesome. Answer your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Rock yeah, bands yeah. all summer in a kilt. Wait, no, wait, wait, a kilt and flip flops. You're June Irish, fir- right? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm wearing the flip flops. June first to September first. Where we're going kilts. Yeah. <laughs> no, <are> you just, <laughs> kilt. Kilt. just it's kilt season, baby. Just two kilts. Or are you going in on it, Sean? I'm not going in. On oh, come on. We can get you like a Kelly. <laughs> time out. Time out. We'll like let a you Kelly we'll, green one. We'll let you wear underwear. Listen. Okay. <laughs> I got a good company. I'm not. I'm not wearing underwear. I got yeah. a really good company that makes them. They're um. They'll like you know tailor to your size and stuff and it's supposed to be like four inches above the knee like you don't wear underwear it's fucking great <laughs> all right tell them we'll take a dozen company. we'll put them in a cabinet we'll have the same outfit just like ernest p Worrell. <laughs> you never saw ernest right he's got no one outfit that he wears and his whole closet yeah. is the same outfit oh, okay. ernest gets cuckolded was a low budget one <laughs> <laughs> he got a little uh, yeah a little desperate at the end yeah there, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. It's a very strange set of films. Yeah. yeah. You, All right. So my artist spotlight this week what do you is got, on a band that's well known, but hasn't put out music in a while. So I like to bring them up to the top of your playlists. Vampire Weekend. Get out. Shut up. Yeah. Really? Get out. I never even heard of them. Great what? band. Vampire uh, Weekend. You yeah. Surprised? They are not. What? Dan wants them to be. No, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, they're not at all. No. What are they? They're There's like a I listen to yacht in high rock yeah. type thing. Yeah. What's a yacht rock? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, hold on. Look no. Like emo? Or, I wish you guys could like see Chris's face Scott, right now. Dude. He's so inquisitive. But like, like, what's yacht rock? Ready? Hold on. Oh, shit. Is it like, I got a yacht, bitch? Like... Yeah, that's Vampire Weekend. Yeah. I like oh, them. They're like, okay. they're like Mighty Mighty Boss Bones, kind of. Yeah, they're, but they... They're it, in that vibe. Is that punkish? Is yeah, that they're ska? punkish. But it's they're like, like, it's ska, like ska, yeah. yeah. But is it they're, ska? It's not ska. They 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 use different. They're more like a. They use the mel, the melody of a of a ska band, but they use different instruments. Yeah, Fair. that's like Mighty Mighty Boss Stones. They yeah. use like trumpets and shit. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The Mighty Mighty Boss Stones, and they're like that. a punk band. Yeah, they use like African percussion. Uh-huh. Like what's his name? Who's the guy from back in the day? Uh, what the fuck is his name? Bobby Simon. McFerrin. Simon. Paul Simon. Paul Simon. They're like that. Uh, Simon so like Garfunkel. Newer, Paul Simon. Dark mix it. Yeah. yeah. But after after Simon and Garfunkel, he he did got his very own poppy. Shit, yeah. He sings. You could call me Al. With Chevy Chase in the right. video. Right. Dun, 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 right. Dun, dun, Listen to those drums. Dun, dun. It's all up in the shit. So. Uh, yeah, that's a that's very Caucasian music. He's uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you even know they're that's how to that in the hood. <laughs> nah. That's a story right there. That's a lesson for time. OK, Paul yeah. Simon was everything at one point. Yeah. And now you're like grasping to remember his name. You're like, right. That guy. Uh, well, you know, the guy. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. like the kids today don't know who he is. They might now if they listen. I can fuck with <laughs> like four of his songs i think you know but people draw like in the air and i air air the night right he was using yeah no right yeah i've been watching true crime shit i haven't been listening to a lot of music lately 
Yeah, that'll People drive love down crime the shows. Fucking love it. They have- oh, I, I like it too. Yeah, I love it. My favorite tail killer order. is probably I like Bundy. Dahmer's <laughs> pretty good too. I couldn't watch the Dahmer show. Oh, I loved it. It was so good. I couldn't get through uh, the I first episode. Like it. I liked it, but it was... Fun. I loved it. It's I not co- the first time they've done Dahmer, but he did no, it really good. I couldn't get through the first because they he made the guy like dance in his fucking... I, as soon as, I yeah. was like, nope, I can't. You know can't I, watch it. You know yeah, what I watched? Bad. You should try it again. It's real good. You know what came out this week? It's a family favorite. <laughs> Two episode premiere streaming on Disney. It was fucking good. It was Willow. Oh, oh yeah, yes. I heard oh, about yeah. that. Oh, I gotta watch that. It's Ugh. okay. You ready? Mad Mardigan and Sorsha are married. Yeah. He's, are they in it? Sorsha's on the show. Mad Mardigan's referenced. He's not showing up on the show yet. I don't know how. Sorsha look good. Eh. CGI. She looks good when they make her younger, but now she's like, oh, know, she's aged. Disney doesn't right. have a lot. She's now. sixty years old. Yeah, I couldn't. Would you do it? No. No? Look at his face. No it's way. It's still Sorsha. I know. I'm thinking about that. I'm adding, Something I'm adding it into the equation like before I answer. You know? <laughs> Is it like Princess Leia where she just like lost if her looks? You, if you watch the original Willow, Sorsha's like the most beautiful chick in the but fucking in the 80s, world. Though, like with her red hair coming yeah. up. And I'm like, I'll, I will marry you immediately. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. damn the consequences. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and like, that's it. You yeah, know, like, true. I don't give a fuck. That chick was my boo the day yeah. I saw her, you yeah. know? Now she's like 60. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So Mad Mardigan, uh, he's not on the show because he's off on like some quest in the storyline or whatever. But, um, Fucking Willow looks real good on the show. Uh, Joanne Wally looks pretty good, but Mad Mardigan and Sorsha have got twin children, like like Luke. I mean, like Han and like, like Han and Princess Leia. Oh, some th- some fans, by theory, think that Willow is in the Star Wars universe. That's like a theory. Oh well, yeah. I don't know. What but is Willow's? What about Willow's wife? Willow's wife's not on the show. Some girls playing his daughter. I know Kaya, Kaya. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the fucking. But the kids, dude, Mad Mardigan's kids are named Eric, and I don't remember the girl's name. Alora Dannon's all grown up on the show. I'm not going to give it away, but she's on there. What about the baby? That's Alora Dannon. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, all right. I'm going to have to watch this ASAP. Yeah, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, watch Willow again, right? Just to catch up on it. And then I know I, I didn't, haven't seen it. He hasn't made an appearance. Yeah. He hasn't made an appearance yet, but Is I Willow saw on. Yes. Disney Plus, the original, yes, I mean? I said it. First thing I said. Okay. Streaming. I'm going to watch it. No, the original, Oh, oh yeah. 100%. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 100%. Right, yeah, I'm going to have to watch it again. It's been a while. I, well, last time I watched it was probably with you. So in the movie Willow, one of the main, uh, one of the side characters is like, makes the movie is, is Ruri the Brownies, right? The little <laughs> Kevin <laughs> yeah. Pollock plays him and he's like, yes, you know, yeah. jumps in the beer and he, he has the dust of broken heart and, and he, you know, that's what makes Mad Mardigan fall in love with Sorsha, right? So yeah. like, uh the um a buddy of mine watched the original Willow this week for the first time and man <laughs> I was so fucking jealous. I was like Is Kevin Mine. Pollock in it? So yeah, so Kevin Pollock's in the trailer, but uh I haven't seen him on the show yet, but they show him in the trailer and it's like That's cool. aw- it's awesome. Yeah, he looks great too. He's so like, like Willow <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch it again because I think the last time I watched it when I was like five. Yeah, let's watch yeah. It with the kids. Yeah. Gotta watch with the kids. I think I was like five. I lived in California. Dan will do popcorn. Wow. Yeah. With butter. Yeah. Cholesterol, whatever. I got great popcorn. Salt, car- caramel. I, I get skinny girl, I get skinny girl popcorn. Caramel yeah, popcorn nice. with the kids. Willow. It's good. <laughs> I encourage the entire <laughs> audience to watch Willow. Popcorn. Sit down with your kids if you have kids. Right. If you're dating somebody or some shit, just fucking maybe watch it then. I don't know what people do. It's a uh, great '80s sci-fi action movie. Fantasy. Fantasy, right? Fantasy. I'm probably exactly. gonna. Pre- watch yourself there with the sci-fi. Sorry, yeah. sorry, guys. It's fantasy. I'll, yeah. I'll pre-watch it tonight by myself so I can make sure I'm yeah. sorry for the kids. Yeah, it might be scary for... Oh, somebody. no, my kids don't give a shit about scary. First of all, I just want to say about the... It's it's a Lucasfilm. Yeah. That's who produces Oh, them. I know. Nice. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> get, too com- get too comfortable on air. <laughs> I was like, I didn't do that a lot. The... Um, the original will is made by Lucas and Ron Howard. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's a right. double fucking powerhouse. Double whammy. Yeah. They th- should have thrown Spielberg in there and just fucking right. taken it to town yeah. with everything, you know? 
But I, I'm pretty sure Ron Howard is involved in this too. But that was, it's definitely Lucasfilm LTD at the beginning is the first fucking. Mm. You know. yeah, well, I'm going to have to watch Willow and then I'm going to watch the show because I haven't seen Willow in a long time either. And James Horner did the Willow sa- mu- uh, suite, the Willow music, which was like classical music. But it was, yeah. I mean, it, it's up there with like anything John Williams has ever done or anyone else. It's a fucking great, great uh, composed Composure? Is it a composition? Composition, sure. I don't know the word. What do classical people call it? A composition? Yeah. Sure. I believe so. Allegro? (laughs) Sonata? Yeah. Something. Moonlight Sonata. Yeah, it's a Moonlight Sonata. All right. Oh, shit. Dan made a mess. Just put that anywhere. Yeah. (laughs) I'll pick it up. So you got Vampire Weekend. Vampire Weekend. Great. Three... Three albums now. Hopefully, they're gonna do something else. They're just a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. I wanna. If you binge watch Sopranos for uh, for two days straight, and you need something to cheer you up, I think Vampire Weekend could help that. I could binge watch Sopranos four times a year. I think I've, my life. Oh. I think I've I've listened or I heard the, every episode because of him watching it in really? the room like i love sopranos. yeah just being in the background like i can't watch put it on when you go to he sleep it weighs on me he man. sits on little cosette he must she must the show weighs on you? for warmth yeah yeah, yeah oh yeah. i say that to my mom all the time though yeah <laughs> yeah with her dog i go don't careful he's gonna crawl underneath you for warmth <laughs> i say it to her all the time because she knows it was like i one could of, see her uh, sitting on him too yeah. it was, yeah. it was yeah. one of lenny's um my stepdad's jokes that with my mom so now it's just like nostalgic. Oh, nice. yeah. i'll yeah. tell you what you might have had like the song of the week of the year last week with free all right now yeah, yeah. i fucking it's a good one right? i downloaded so it immediately when i got home i right. couldn't believe i didn't already have it i rocked out to it driving in the jeep this week i was yeah like, yeah yeah <laughs> Look at that. All right. and in that scene too right he's so like good he's like so what's good. this he's like Maybe she's in need of a kiss. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I can get down with what this guy's saying right now. He's like, slow, not so fast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I YouTubed the fucking scene with the yeah. Vipers. And yeah. he's like, he's like, that's good wine. He's like, let's just go steal it from him. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll steal it from these guys stealing it. It was a little like weird because like those dudes went down like punks when when right. when he pulled out his gun and i was like why didn't the other guy just pull out a gun too and be like now nah, what's up motherfucker we both got these guns yeah, yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. started shooting at him after the fact i was like yeah eh, that's weird but yeah. whatever they should have just made him bitch out and right. fucking hit the deck and yeah it would have been better i don't know yeah it was it was but great fucking scene great, great scene. fucking song yeah. i'm giving you full endorsement credit right. for yeah. song of the week of the year yeah oh, wow I, I think it, i think it is I yeah don't, i don't know you bring that one out of retirement you know that one's that one falls through the cracks it's a good fucking tune mm-hmm. uh i have right. like a classic rock playlist and that was not on it it is now I but hope. it is now yes Isn't. well this is going to drive a conversation too. go so and i don't know if we brought this up last time but scientists uh have found a zombie virus get out what where that was that (laughs) wait hold on hold on hold on there are viruses that take over brain control of organisms that's yeah zombie viruses um that they just some french scientists discovered it in the locked in the permafrost in russia oh yeah there's all kinds of shit frozen in that stuff oh yeah no fuck that that's and why it's you, melting uh, because yeah. of climate change right right yeah oh yeah, yeah that shit's dangerous there's, sh- there's, there's a tv show called the last ship mm-hmm. from, on tnt and i really fucking like it i think my yeah. mom was watching that and it's about a, a naval uh, surface warfare ship called the nathan james spear of the navy and uh they they fucking are the the whole plot of the first two seasons of the show is that there is a virus wiping out humanity right now. Yeah. And it was released in the perma from global warming melting uh a virus that's like two million years old that's a super killer. Um it was in like some bird shit in the ice and it fro- unfroze, got airborne, and some yeah. Antarctic scientist got it and passed it on it like basically yeah. caught <clears throat> everyone in the world like got it fire, yeah and they got these guys were quarantined because they were out in the navy ship yeah and they, they had the doctor with the original core sample and they were like trying to find they have to find the uh they have to find the cure but yeah that is a talker 
Well, so so the one they found uh, was stranded under a lake more than forty eight thousand five hundred years ago. <gasps> So it's what it's like. And they they're calling it drill down to get it, or it just, I don't know, it just yeah. became surfaced because they've like a lot of that. A lot of that Siberian uh, frozen stuff has like thawed. They've had like full right. woolly mammoths and some other yeah, shit yeah. that they found in yeah, there. Right, like right. <clears throat> well, they're they're calling it a zombie virus, but it's not a zombie virus. You know what I mean? What's it do? Like it's like zombies in quotations because it's been dead so long. Oh, I see. It's a zombie virus. Oh, that's now a trick. It's come yeah, back. I know. You I tricked know. us. Fuck yeah! This is a story. Shit. I was gonna no, say. No, no, it's real. <laughs> it is real as fuck. No, he got us excited, I got excited thinking, be a thinking it was a zombie virus. Yeah. Got a zombie. Like, well, I'm just noticing it right now that that this article is putting it in in quotations, so it's not necessarily a zombie virus. The virus is the zombie. The virus is the zombie. I don't know. Because it's come back to life. You know what bothers me about it the most is that somebody wrote that article and they knew if I write zombie yeah. virus, of course. Oh, of course. everyone's going to read this. Yeah. Go, zombie yeah. virus. I'm going to get everyone so excited. I'm watching the final season of Walking Dead right now. And I was like, man, that would be some shit like, if I, a fucking know, real zombie virus hit right at the end of Walking Dead being on TV. That would be, <laughs> the odds of that would be right. crazy. You know what right. I hate when somebody says, some boomer says to me, like, or us, like, you maybe you should watch the news. Like, maybe I shouldn't, actually. The news they're is fucking full horrible. shit. It's not Walter Cronkite anymore telling me what's right. actually up. Right, it's opinions. It's opinions and spins. What's her name? So, used to make people cry every time. Who? The broad there. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, how, Barbara how, Walters. This is the guy's a feminist. <laughs> Barbara, how feminist of Barbara Walters could make every, if you didn't cry during the interview, she failed. Yeah, yeah. Where's that journal? Siberia is warming at one of the fastest rates on Earth, about four times the global average. So that's good. That's fine. It's pretty. That's sweet. That's where they found it. So that's real good. It's pretty sweet. Everybody's doing good. Yep. Good, good thing job, we're mas- Good thing we're masking up. <laughs> so yeah, so clickbait is fuck on the on the zombie <laughs> yeah, virus, for but sure. but I think it's probably important too, you know. Yeah. Mm. Where they go, oh, uh, you know, they go, oh, we'll get people to read this and be like, oh, this is a global warming issue. We need to fucking stop paying attention. To I this guess shit. it's a war out there for information right now. Climate change. Uh, That's what it is. But let me say this: uh, just when I first saw it, I didn't read anything about it. I saw it, and I was like. Not touching that one. Don't want to get into that shit. And it, and then I was thinking, like, all right, so like, you know, we've discussed the European rewrite, yeah, <laughs> and the Great White rewrite, the Great White rewrite, right? Yeah. And what? So like, and like, all right, you know, human, the King James, their, the King James Bible, <laughs> by their, you know, belief system, it's Earth was is six thousand years old or something like that. Yeah. So right here, like you have a virus, and and I was thinking zombie virus that like possibly ended a human species. Right. Well, yeah, <clears throat> that's a high. And it was because of zombies, and they just they, they just it was an actual yeah. zombie. I got so apocalypse. excited! I got yeah. so excited. <laughs> That's what I thought it was until literally live reading it. I was like, "Oh shit, this is the what Walking I'm Dead talking about." That's whack. Prepared humanity oh, for for sure a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. like everyone knows. Dan the rules. made a Lucille. Yeah, I, I that's I have, it, I have it in my bedroom. <laughs> Everybody, so many zombies come. I got so I put barbed wire on it. Like I he made handmade fake, a handmade barbed wire because I wanted to have fake barbed wire on it. But when you do that, you actually make real barbed wire. <laughs> I might as well just use real barbed wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it was so dangerous. It's got it's TLC. So dangerous. It's got TLC in it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tip I would tetanus. Say, I would say Dan would protect your whole family right now in a zombie apocalypse. Like, look at the fucking guy. Yeah, for sure. I'd have war paint on already, <laughs> and I'd be forming clans. Dan, and I'd find this guy, obviously. <laughs> right. I'd be, has, a, I'd be a war I would chief. leave Dan at home to yeah. defend the house because he walks too loudly. I'd be able to sneak up on those motherfuckers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would never let you out. <laughs> A classic, out. a classic PUBG strategy for you all out there, if you want to know, is uh, you take a complex, right? And you you want to hold it down for defensive purposes. Mm-hmm. And as the as the map is shrinking, these complexes become few and far between, which right. means people are fighting over them, right? <laughs> so you got to either be able to hold it or someone's going to come roll you. So what I like to do is I let my whole team go in there and mm-hmm. I stay out in the bushes outside and, and then wait. The team rolls up <laughs> and starts fighting my guys. I'm outside and I fucking ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Waste them. See, 
that's that's what I want to do. We get, them in, a cro- we get do. them in a crossfire. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I know that's what you want to yeah. do. You were describing a yeah. classic PUBG strategy. Okay. See? I am I am mentally. <laughs> I have spent a year, a full. Listen to this. This is this is in no way depressing. This is probably the greatest. This is probably the coolest part about me. My life, my life choices, and my lifestyle have given me the ability. To spend a full year, over a full year of my life, real time, virtually in PUBG. Yeah. I've spent over a year of my life in the game. Awake, like as, 300, like as you, your character. Yeah. See you in Valhalla. <laughs> oh, Jesus That's Christ. why there's moments in time where you're drifting towards. It's like 3% of you. my life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's awesome. It's crazy. It's been a good time. I've had a fucking. I've had a wild run virtu- virtually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. And, you know, you have a little micro dose of uh, goofballs. The yeah. uh, the lines between reality and fantasy in the game <laughs> blur. UFOs. I'm just telling you. <laughs> New Year's Eve, like New Year's Eve, like a year ago, I did yeah. a hit of acid and I played PUBG and it was like, it was like the next day I woke up and in my memory had flagged that is real memory. And I had spent two <laughs> weeks slugging it out with Charlie in the Viet Cong in Vietnam. <laughs> it was so real. And I was like, like ready player one. I haven't seen that. I I'm just telling you virtual reality, movie. virtual reality is all well and good, but all you need is a hit of acid and play regular <laughs> yeah. and Xbox you think it's real. and you're in the game. <laughs> Trust me, your brain's flagging it as in the game. So anyway, check it out, everybody. Check out all the stuff we talked about tonight. I'll put the links down there. Try some acid this uh, holiday season for New yeah. Year's Eve. Or, or don't. Yeah, go to your New or Year's Eve, uh, Christmas Eve with a head full of acid. Or, hey, or don't. You're the guy that sent me the article on the acid today, man. Oh, yeah. And that's a cool show. It's got like, they got like going to like um, dog, kennel dog club shows yeah. on acid. Yeah. So and is like a, going to monster truck shit on acid. No, yeah, Vice. It's Vice. 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 Yeah, Vice is like a segment, like a show. And these guys just get hopped up on acid and go yeah. different and places like to see how it'll, a dog like, show. how it'll hit them yeah yeah i mean they're going to a dog show on acid. they're doing yeah they're the, doing the, the famous dog and then show. interacting with like dog owners yeah. they're putting like, in the r&d man yeah. yeah they're doing the fucking work oh, they left him hanging though like he was so fucked up and they were like trying to get him to do shit later and then he's like don't can you guys leave me alone like yeah i can't function right now i can't talk to you we need to end this now the one you know the one that you sent so it's the show yeah. on vice called doing things on acid or whatever yes, yes. vice and is a lot of different shows the one that was sent to us today was this guy took acid and went to a monster truck rally <laughs> and yeah. and he had to like be it was like a show so he had to like interview people and talk to people and he's and he went through the all the phases and he like there's this one moment and uh and and Dan, you can talk on this too. Like I'm gonna put the link in our the, description. The bus, the <laughs> he's watching. And he's going. This is crazy. He's like, it's so loud. He's like the he's like the the trucks are doing donuts and like they're oh he's the paying tracks and he's the, paying attention to the geometry. He's doing the yeah, math. The tracks in the in the in the dirt is like shining. And then he's like, and then this freaking monster truck that looks like a bus comes up, and I can't just lose my shit. You got to get out of there. <clears throat> That's one of the things on very funny, but also like not funny. Like it was serious. One of the things on when you do hallucinogens is this becomes a certain point every once in a while. You just have to get out of there. You're like, I'm sorry, I got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is it. You're not long. You're not on Bad. whatever's going on around you. You can't be part of it anymore, and you have to withdraw. Yes, and yeah. that's that's a part of the process. It happens. This guy was doing it from the minute it started. <laughs> oh man. Oh shit. What about the dog? Dan, the dog. Oh, did you watch it? Yeah, I, I watched the dog it. one yet. The, no, it's right. It's right. I didn't watch the the dog show one either, but the. The monster truck that looks like a dog and has oh he flapping yeah, fucked him up. Yeah, the boss like, when he saw the go. bus he's like I gotta get out of here. The yeah, bus yeah. school bus with four and then he was did you see him interview the um, yeah, driver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like I think um, I was just worried this guy was gonna kill me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really awkward. They yeah. just, and the people that were filming and like the producers just left because they were so embarrassed. Yeah, he was like just like dude you can't put people on acid. No. On TV. that's why they did it. Crispin, yeah, Glover, exactly. Crispin Glover did it on, on Letterman, on Letterman yeah. in the eighties, and it ruined his career. He's the oh, guy, yeah, the yeah, original right. George McFly. He was like, <laughs> all acid it out on the fucking Letterman. Yeah. Uh, you never see that video? No. Oh, uh, you could YouTube it, dude. Crispin Glover had like the in, he like hit pay dirt. He was George McFly yeah, knocking right. out Biff Tannen and fucking the original Back to the Future. He's got the world on a string now, dude. He's the fucking semi hero of the movie, you know, yeah. debatably because of Mark <laughs> McFly. Um, wow. I, I, I don't exactly. I'm, I'm gonna have to watch so, it. So, so he 
for whatever reason, decided he was going to go on Letterman and take some LSD. And I think he said it on Letterman that he was on LSD. And like Letterman was like, uh, he was super uncomfortable. Like yeah. he wanted him. Like you could see David Letterman. Like I'm, I want this guy out of here. Who's got one of those fucking giant hooks. Yeah. They pull people off the stage. Oh, with. Oh, wow. And oh, it was really Letterman. Good. It was Letterman when he was doing Conan's show. Yeah. Late, right. Late. Right. Yeah, yeah. The late show. Oh man. I, uh, I saw something on Michael J. Fox this week and then this is all I got for the week, but he was talking about, Parkinson's disease and his battle with it, blah blah blah. And I'm not making fun of the, any of that because it's not. No, it's not. Horrible. It's a shitty neurological. You know, sucks. Right, right. But I was just saying it would be like amazing if, like, you know, at the beginning of like Willy Wonka, uh, uh, the beginning of uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, how like Willy Wonka's first appearance, he shows up and he's like all hobbly, like he's old, and he does like a rolling jump, and everyone's like, hey. <laughs> Like imagine if Michael if Michael J. Fox did just that did that and was like, Hey everybody, I've been acting for thirty yeah. years and I have Parkinson's. Somebody give me an Oscar. I would <clears throat> I would like to see that if he had gotten like some crazy Oh, like um, stem cell cure. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Like that would be great. All of a sudden, like, hey guys, I'm cured. And everybody's Dude, like, Wow, we, we would Michael all J. lose Fox our fucking back, minds. It would be great. We would I mean, lose our minds. He would be if he didn't have that, he'd be one of the biggest actors. That's right a now. dude whose career got cut yeah. short. Yeah, yeah. for Name, sure. Mm, I mean, I'm not saying every movie he's been in's been great, but like no, but he was on the path. He's Teen Wolf, man, the original Teen Wolf. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he he's started fucking doing Marty more serious McFly. ones, and he did a Vietnam movie. Yeah, he's done some. He stuff. did a show after he did like a sitcom. Yes, uh, he was like the mayor, or like he worked in a like yeah. mayor office or something like that. And he had Park something on city. the show. Something city. Oh, yeah. yeah, Spin you, City. Spin City. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yes, yeah. and then they and then he had to leave, and they replaced him yeah. with someone else. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. lame. That was like his last thing. I Medical think. leave. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, listen. Thanks for listening, and everyone. Uh, I guess. Try some LSD on uh, New Year's and yeah. don't interview or, anyone to go to any monster mushrooms. truck shows. Yeah, yeah. mushrooms or, are good too. I know a guy. Um, all right, get your hooshies off. Thanks for listening. Bye.